Is Nintendo stock a good buy? I do think the company has incredible fundamentals, but have I bought the stock? Wait until the end of this video to gather the utmost valuable information in regard to the company and to find out whether it fits in my portfolio. As always, always set with educational purposes and is not meant to be taken as financial advice. According to the Fortune Business Insights, the global console market will grow by 5.35% per year until 2027 going from 40 billion to 51.15 billion. In this space, there are three main competitors, Microsoft's Xbox, Sony's PlayStation and Nintendo Switch's console. The Nintendo Switch is the youngest out of all of these consoles as it was released six years ago. According to the DFC Intelligence, the video game console market share by 2026 will be as follows. 39% market dominance is going for Sony, then comes Nintendo with 34% and Microsoft is on spot number 3 with 27%. So from a mode and industry growth perspective, things could be much better. But there is still growth and the business segment is basically a triopoly for now. The big risk is for another company to come out with a new more revolutionary console, here I would place a stronger competitive mode for Nintendo, as they are the owners of some very strong brand content IPs which are ingrained in child culture. In the following image you can see some of the most recognizable brands which are exclusive for Nintendo's consoles. Pokemon is the biggest franchise in history, Zelda and Mario are also some incredible IP holdings. When it comes to business diversification, 78.8% of the company's sales come from overseas. 43.5% of sales are from North and South America, predominantly North, 25% comes from Europe and 21.2% comes from Japan, where the company is situated and the last 10.3% comes from the rest of the world. Something that is important to mention is that by late 2023 or by 2024 it is expected for the company to announce a new second version of the Nintendo Switch. This could be a breakout moment for the stock as it will signal whether the stock will continue to grow. Some experts are expecting a Nintendo Wii-like moment which capitulated the stock to new highs close to 20 years ago. Let's now check the most important business metrics. I want to start with something I truly love and admire in the company and this is their debt management. The company has virtually no long-term debt. This is incredible and it shows exactly how organic the growth of the business has been. The company has 20.2 billion in assets and about 4.2 billion dollars in total liabilities. This gives it a 16 billion dollar equity position. The current market cap of Nintendo is 55 billion. This means we're paying a price to book ratio of 3.43, which is an okay level. What is more fascinating is that 12 billion out of the 16 billion in equity is in cash and cash equivalents, which means the company is incredibly liquid as about 21% of the company's market cap is in cash alone. Another very very good investment sign that I see in the company is that it has a stable, very fast growing dividend. The current dividend yield from Nintendo is 3.63, but as I have said many times, whether the dividend is 1, 5 or 10% does not matter. We must check if this dividend is secure. For this we check the dividend payout ratio, which for Nintendo is 0.70. This means the dividend paid is equal to 70% of the net income, which is an okay level. Another thing we must check is the dividend growth rate. According to Guru Focus, the 10-year dividend growth rate is an outstanding 42.6% per year. While during the past 5 years the growth was 41%, which means it has kept its pace. 
So from a pure business and risk perspective, Nintendo looks pretty okay. The efficiency of the company is also tremendous with a return on equity of 20.48%, while the other favorite efficiency metric of Buffett, the return on invested capital, is showing a 37% return. Both of these must be above 12% and they're multiple times higher. The current PE ratio for Nintendo is 11.7%, which is very cheap, and it is also a good level. The 5-year growth rate of the EBITDA is 71%. EBITDA stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization. This gives us a peg ratio of 0.16, which is 6 times below 1 a level which is considered to be a good level according to Peter Lynch. This means Nintendo is very cheap in regard to its growth. Even if we take the 10-year average PE ratio of the company, which according to Guru Focus is 23, we still have a peg ratio of 0.32. All in all, I do like Nintendo very much, but I would not place it as a very big part of my portfolio. We must not forget there are currency risks as the company is situated in Japan and my biggest concern is how the market will like the new upcoming Nintendo Switch console. But from all aspects, I do like Nintendo, with the only risk I see is the lack of substantial competitive mode, which is the case for almost all other companies. Thank you for watching, until the end, make sure to like the video as this helps it reach more people, subscribe to the channel and comment down below some other stocks you want me to cover here next on the channel. And make sure also to watch the previous stock and portfolio analysis that I have already made and have uploaded here again on the channel. Goodbye for now and I'll see you in the next analysis.